Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome in. Today I'm going to talk about the books that I read in April, or to be specific, the four books that I read in April. Not as many as last month, um, I don't think I was in much of a reading mood. For part of the month I was a bit ill, and it just was not in the mood to read when you've got like a stuffed up nose all you want to do is watch supernatural really and you know what i don't blame me either so let's get into what i did read what i did read was the spite house by johnny compton fire rush by jacqueline crooks trespasses by louise kennedy and children of paradise by camilla grudover which equals a total of four books so first i read the spite club which was the book club pick for the literally dead book club which is run by books and lala on youtube um it's all horror thriller mysteries those kind of books all of which i love so i really wanted to like try and partake in some of the upcoming ones and i was like oh a haunted house book I'll read that. So I found it on, I think it was my library app or script, but it was on one of them. I read it on, like, I don't have the physical edition with me. I don't have the physical edition at all, actually, <laughs> because books are expensive. <laughs> so the story follows Eric and his two daughters, Stacy and Dee, who are kind of on the run from something in their past. It's not revealed at this point what it is, but you know that they're running from something. Something's happened in their life and they're kind of on the run. They're kind of taught to be really weird, like wary of strangers, as all kids should be, I guess, but they're, they're extra weary um, about being in public spaces, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so they agree to stay in this haunted house. It's called the Spite House um, for, for money. And so we follow this family who are staying in the house and also the owners of the Spite House themselves who are kind of looking for answers and want him to stay in the house to kind of monitor the supernatural things that are going on. And they obviously have their own reasons which you find out. So we follow all of those characters and you have a lot of points of view, which I think at times was a little bit confusing. There was a bit too many things going on because Sometimes the, like, the, the names of the characters would change. So for example, Emily would sometimes be Emily or sometimes she'd be Millie. And there was no real like uh, explanation of the change. It would just happen. She'd just suddenly be Millie talking about this and then it would be Emily and it'd be like, hang on, oh wait, there's the same person. Um, and the same for Dee. And I think her name was Odessa, I believe. And Dee and Odessa, and they, they just used them interchangeably, which is a bit like, oh, hang on, who's talking? Especially when you don't know the characters very well at this point. But I think the day, the novel overall was a debut novel, which was, it was really good for. It was, the story itself was very interesting and I liked the kind of like the twist on it or like, not really a twist, but the way that the haunted house was, it wasn't just like, oh, ghosts, spooky. It was a bit more interesting, um, which I could really appreciate. Um, it was really easy to read. I think the only thing that I didn't like was some of the explanation. Again, I feel like this happens with a lot of haunted house stories that I've read. I just, I feel like I want a bit more. Or like, uh, like, that doesn't make sense to me. Give me under, explain it a bit more. Or I don't like the explanation a little bit. Like it's just a bit, it feels a bit, simplistic or under explained which maybe is the point um i think in a lot of horror things there is that little bit of ang ambiguity that's left on purpose so that it's not giving too much away and it's just a little bit more like oh ambiguous which i guess is fine but that was my only real gripe i gave it four stars overall it was it's a good read i'd recommend it if you like things that are creepy and um not just creepy but it's got a little bit of like family dynamics um a little bit of like a different kind of story not just the usual haunting with bits of twists and turns and you get to see the like two sides so the people who are the family and then the two women who are selling the house or who are employing him to be there and then next i read fire rush by jacqueline crooks which is kind of a coming of age kind of story um, in like historical fiction coming of age in the 80s um it follows our protagonist yame and she's kind of like in this 80s dub scene sort of reggae sort of caribbean culture involved in it um and it kind of follows her through this scene in the 80s and then events which unfold in the novel that takes her further afield to bristol and jamaica without giving too much away of the story because I feel like it's something that just you don't want to know too much about it other than those are kind of the themes in it and then 
you just go through this journey but it's packed with lots of like lots of really deep and like rich themes um there's lots of things about like love and loss um grief especially and kind of like i think especially the caribbean kind of way of looking at grief um and there's also lots of i think it's jamaican creole um is how you say it or what it is i think i read it somewhere that that's what it specifically is but i'm not 100 percent um, the speech is written how it would be said in the Jamaican Creole, which I found a bit hard to understand at first because of it's not what I'm used to. But I think it really gives like an authentic kind of depiction of Caribbean like culture and communities. And having family that are from Guyana, I feel like I should maybe know more about it, but apparently I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the writing was really, really like, I'm not sure if you call it lyrical or like, rhythmic almost like because of so much of it about it is about the music scene i know the author was really inspired by music as she was writing you can kind of feel the music in the in the writing um which makes it really interesting to read and i think it's one that i'd really want to go back and read again just because some parts of it were probably lost on me in my ignorance of not being able to understand um some of the words and some of the implications of it but then once you like kind of look into it a bit further you kind of get a bit more from it like or you might get some more from that you might understand a little bit more things that were kind of missed but as you go it kind of go along you're kind of being like oh you learn a bit more but yeah overall i really liked it i really enjoyed it i thought it was really really interesting and different to read but i gave it four stars and then next up i read trespasses by louise kennedy um this and, and fire rush i read four the women's prize long list that I'm currently trying to get through. Um, the shortlist has actually been announced and I'm kind of going to move on to that and then come back to the rest. Um, but Trespasses made it to the shortlist, so woohoo! Um, so in Trespasses we follow Kushla, who's a Catholic during the Troubles in Ireland, um, who kind of starts up this affair with a local lawyer who happens to be a Protestant. So it kind of follows that storyline as well as a couple of other of the people in um, her town, and it really looks at how politics kind of interweaves into normal people's lives um, and how like ordinary lives can be affected by the politics of the time, um, which I thought was really interesting. I think the premise of the book didn't really seem like something that would be up my street because I just don't really like things like, oh, like I think portraying it as a love story as well. I was like, oh, I don't like, I don't like affairs. I don't like love stories and like messy relationships, like the, the, the cheating and like, oh, this person's married and this, blah, blah, blah. I just don't like it. I find it just boring and a bit there. I think I've said this before. <laughs> but yeah, the premise didn't really seem like it would be something that I'd enjoy that much, but I actually really thought that the kind of uh, ordinary people kind of storylines worked really well and she just did a really good job with making them feel really believable and creating a lot of empathy for the characters and the families and these people who aren't really involved in these things but are somehow have been impacted by the politics. I think I really liked the relationship as well between Kushta and her mother and also little Davy. he was really cute. Um, I think I think I mentioned before that sometimes I think I've seen this book like spoken about as a romance or like it's a, oh no not a romance sorry a love story which um, I don't think it's a love story I think I think that's the part that I was like uh, it's not really a love story like they have an affair but they're not really in love like it doesn't really come across like that I don't I don't really think it like it doesn't seem like they're in love but uh, they have an affair and they have like some kind of relationship there but it's messy and it's not very good really it's a bit meh um i think i saw someone else say that they thought that michael was hot and i was like oh, wow have you come to that conclusion but no nevertheless uh let's move on <laughs> i gave that one four stars though because of, i was quite surprised by it um how much i really enjoyed it and just, it was so easy to read I just kind of flew through it and then the final one that I read was Children of Paradise. This one I finished really recently, like literally yesterday. And I think the best way to describe it is it's um, strange. It's a really strange book. It's kind of like this contemporary meets horror, like contemporary with horror elements, I'd say. Um, 
it kind of like you kind of questioning what's actually going on is it like actually like weird paranormal things going on here or is it reality are they just on drugs which is highly likely as that is apparently that they sniff up the drugs that have been left in the toilets and stuff so you know you're always guessing um but anyway it starts um or the premise of the book is Holly starts working in this small little independent um, cinema and she kind of gets befriended by the people that work there. She kind of gets invited into a little group um, where they stay and have like little late night showings. Um, after hours they watch different things, like lots of the cult kind of films. They go and watch films at each other's houses, things like that. It's this little close-knit kind of like weird little group of misfits and odd people. and. It kind of follows that as well as the, um, the cinema being taken over by a bigger chain. So like lots of criticism of capitalism, which let's be real is understandable. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing that I mo no noticed mostly through this is kind of this the feeling of like separation or detachment um, through especially through like the writing style. Like we don't really find out anything about the character Holly. She's just this character who's moving through this cinema, this through this with these other people, um, she tell and she she makes up stories saying that she tells the people that this about her, that this happened, her dad was like this and her brother was like this and that, but it's not like true. She's made it up, and then we never really find out too much about her background. Um, she's just where she's living and what she's doing at this cinema, just working this job. I'm not a massive film person like I like watching films but I'm not like into film at all so I think there was lots and lots of references that I probably missed and lots of like cult film references and not necessarily just cult but like older films and foreign films that are kind of like in the 30s like formulative is that the word I don't know if it's formulative or um like the ones that kind of created film and that people look back at and reference being like wow they're the first person to do this lots of references like that to like film titles and projections and different ways of showing films and stuff that I probably missed but if you're a film fan you probably I feel like you, you'd love those little bits in there I like the depictions of kind of this capitalist the insidious capitalism taking over the cinema. I thought that was quite a good little critique that was kind of going on there um, alongside lots of the language that was very just like gross. A lot of like toilet talk and just, just the kind of like, de not depraved, but you know, <laughs> just like lots of really gross things happening. It's gross, the depictions were quite gross in this, which I think works with the horror elements. It kind of creates this real unsettling theme throughout it, which was really interesting to read but uh, to me like I don't know maybe it, it's just me as a reader but I felt like a bit detached from it like like I said with the language being very like like this feeling of separation but maybe that's the point of it but I kind of was just like oh at the end of it oh okay that's over then that's just that just happened and I don't really think I took too much more than that like like it was it was interesting to read but um, it wasn't my favourite read essentially, so I gave that one three stars. So yeah, those are all the books that I read in April, only four, hopefully I'll read some more um, next month and find maybe some new favourites. I'm continuing reading the Women's Prize shortlist, so we'll see what comes up then. Let me know below what you're reading, what you read the, uh, last month last month yes last month <laughs> what you read in april and thank you for watching if you enjoyed please leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see anything more from me um i should be posting more bookish videos soon i feel like i'm getting a bit more into it i feel like a little bit more confident talking <laughs> So yeah, if you want to see more, leave a like, uh, let me know what you've read this month or what you're currently reading, just anything, just, just talk to me about books please. <laughs> um, and thanks for watching, see you later, bye!